Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Let's cook some Gai Lan, some Chinese broccoli. Well, it's that time to do another harvest and cooking video. Uh, many of you like them. Uh, they're not my most popular videos, but I like to do them. I like to show you how I use some of these, especially these uh, these kind of plants and greens that are not really native to the U.S. and somewhat unfamiliar to some of us. I've got some Gai Lan. It is called Chinese broccoli in English. It is called Ryu Kuho in Japanese. And there are several names for it right there. I got my seed from Kitazawa Seeds. And this has been a good performer. Uh, let's take a look at it and I'll show you what we're looking for. Here is my Chinese broccoli. You can see that it is beginning to flower and the seed packet says that when you see a few flowers on the stalk it's ready to harvest. Now my uh, Chinese broccoli is not as thick as you might find it at the Chinese market and uh, not as thick as you might see on some videos and that's because it's been unseasonably warm here and so these plants are going to seed trying to bolt um, while they're still young like this. But these are perfectly edible plants, they're perfectly tender and um, it is also said that this particular kind of plant keeps well in the refrigerator for quite a long time. So here's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to harvest a few of these right now. I'm going to store them in the refrigerator and then I'm going to give it a few days. Maybe, uh, maybe four days. It's Christmas Eve tomorrow, Christmas the next day, Sunday the following day where I will be preaching and busy all day. Uh, so I can't get to this until maybe Monday. But that'll give us time to put some of this in the refrigerator and see how it stands up. And we'll come out and harvest a little more on Monday and do a side-by-side -side comparison. And we'll cook this stuff. Now, if you're going to use your garden shears for harvesting, make sure that you have not trimmed or pruned anything poisonous, like elderberries or something like that. Um, and um, make sure you've not done that recently or you, you've washed your tools real well. I'm going to come in here. First, I'm going to pull that weed. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to trim these, but I'm going to leave a few leaves behind because this is supposed to be able to grow back. So we'll just come in and harvest, leaving a few leaves behind. And there's what we've got. A nice thick stem, nice leaves, a few blossoms on there. Yeah, that's good. Let's get a few of these. Again, I'm going to leave some leaves on these plants, these short plants, and hopefully they'll start producing some more and we can maybe get a second crop out of this. So I'm just going to get a few of them here and put them in the fridge and see how they stand up to refrigeration. And then when we come back next week, we'll pick some fresh ones and we'll put them side by side. That's a nice batch, huh? What do you think? All right, let's get them bagged up. Isn't it beautiful? Here's our guy line ready to go in a bag. We're going to refrigerate it until Monday and uh, we'll wash it all up with the harvest we take Monday and we'll compare stored Chinese broccoli versus fresh Chinese broccoli and see if what they say is true. And I'm looking forward to having some of this. It should be delicious. One thing we have to remember about this crop is it was just a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago, that I had to spray with BT. We had um, we had chewing insects, caterpillars, and uh, the BT worked. You don't see on any of that new growth any caterpillar damage. But with BT, you want to give it at least yeah, three or four days before you harvest. And then you want to wash your produce really well. So make sure to wash this really well. This is what we don't like to see. This is a leaf-footed bug. Leaf-footed bug. And that's the second one I've seen in a week um, in my garden. This is very unusual. It is Christmas Eve, and it's warm out here. And these guys are per uh, patrolling the garden. They're, they're pests, so I like to get rid of them. Well, since I have a little bit of room right here, I'm going to plant some more seeds. It is Christmas Eve, and well, that's a weird time to be planting this stuff. But we have a warm spell coming, and I think that we can get some of these to grow. And uh, we'll see. Doesn't hurt to try. Get some of this Bermuda grass out of here.
Now the depth on these is just a quarter inch or so, an eighth of an inch, you just barely cover them. So I'm just gonna drop these seeds in about two inches apart because I can see that's a good spacing. I could go a little closer than what I thinned here. So we'll just drop some seeds in and see what we get. We will have to thin because it's hard to drop these one at a time. So I'll just sprinkle some in here. Funny how you change your plans once you get started, huh? <clears throat> just gently cover them over and I'll water them in and we'll see what we get. Maybe we'll get a second crop. Might as well, I got this little strip here. All right, pat them in to give them good contact with the soil and let's get some water. Good enough. We'll leave that watering can right there. Tomorrow we can come and water again just to make sure these hard seeds take up this moisture. Um, we had some good rain recently. The soil is already a little bit moist, but we want to make sure that we get these things soaking up that moisture. So until your seeds come up, until you see the germination, it's good to keep the, the soil nice and moist in these weeds. I have this little section of my herb garden here. Lots of oregano and rosemary. This is like a tree growing here. Uh, that's awesome. But I've got this spot here that I grew some mizuna in. And uh, well, it's done. It's been harvested, it's taken out. So I'm gonna sprinkle some of these seeds around in here as well. See what we get. Doesn't hurt to try. Got a little bit left. Yep, a little bit left. I'm just gonna broadcast these and scratch them into the surface of the soil. We'll see if we can get some free food. Just like that. This is more of a potting mix in this uh, bed over here so we'll see how how these seeds fare. Let's water those. This soil is better draining because it's a raised bed style kind of potting mix style lots of peat moss in here so I'll need to keep this a little bit more watered but this stuff will wick all this moisture down deep into this bed so I'll need to make sure that I keep this moist especially in that top eighth of an inch or so where the seeds are that'll dry out in the sun real quick so there we go we'll keep this watered and uh, hopefully we'll get some guy land coming up here and yeah, look at that Look at those herbs, that's awesome. I need to dry some of this stuff. All right, fast forward, it's now Monday. Look at the difference in these plants. Our warm weather has these plants bolting like crazy. The bees are everywhere. Uh, so I'm gonna, for the sake of the bees, I'm gonna just leave some of these flowers, but I'm gonna harvest some. And what we were gonna do is see if there's a difference between uh, those that were harvested several days ago and stored in the fridge and these that are still here in the garden and are harvested fresh. Um, I see some here like these little guys. These are the ones we're going to take today. Um, yeah, let's see what, what let's see what happens. They say you should harvest your Gai Lan, your Chinese broccoli, when one or two flowers starts to open. That's when they're at the best. But um, I suspect that these could get much larger. I've researched this plant and the stems do get much thicker than this. And uh, well, I think mine are thin because like I said, they're bolting, they're going to flower because it's unseasonably warm. That's a bit of a thicker stem on that one. And more flowers open at the top, but we'll see how it tastes. Look, I got a bee trying to get to the flowers of this one in my hand. There are so many bees here. Wow, this is encouraging. All right, let's go cook. All right, now we're gonna compare four day old guy land that has been stored in the fridge to the fresh cut. This has been stored. The leaves are still pretty good looking. Everything's about the same actually. The only difference we have is this one's cold and this one's not. So yeah, this uh, for four days of storage, I don't see any problem. I don't see any wilting. I don't see anything that should suggest that this will not keep well. Yeah, it was, it's uh, living up to its uh, reputation. 
All right, so well, that, there's no difference, so I'm going to cook them all together. First, we need to wash this really well. You may remember that we treated this with BT, and BT is that bacterial um, insecticide that uh, got rid of some of the bugs we were having. We were having some caterpillar damage, but we want to wash it real good, even though it's been uh, a good long while since we treated. This has a lot of dirt in it, and you don't want any hitchhikers in there, uh, any snails, anything like that. Always wash your produce. Even if it comes from the store, you never know whose fingers have been all over that. So we'll get this soaking in some water, put a little bit of vinegar in that water. That'll kill off anything uh, that's clinging on there and cause it to drop to the bottom. And I'm just going to wash it real good and then we're going to stir fry. Take some grape seed oil, just a little bit, a little bit of sesame oil, just for flavor. And we're going to turn this up on high. We're going to infuse this with garlic. I added a little ginger powder in there since I don't have any ginger. We're going to infuse this oil with the flavor of garlic and ginger. All right, we now have garlic infused oil. We're gonna remove our garlic and set it aside. Plain old oyster sauce. And we're gonna drop it in there. About that much, just eyeballing it here. That's probably about four tablespoons, maybe three. Gonna add some light soy sauce. Just for about a tablespoon. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of sugar. And we're gonna thicken this up. Alright, now we're gonna transfer this to our bowl with our garlic and reserve it, set it aside. Turn the heat back on on high. I'm gonna add about a, a cup of water and let that come up to a boil. Now we're up to boiling. Just gonna add our Chinese broccoli, our Gai Lan, and give it about two to three minutes in that water to steam. Covered if you can. I don't have much of a cover to fit this, but it'll trap some of that steam. So we'll give that about three minutes and we'll check on it. All right, look what we have now. Now the way you know it's done is you have to try some. These stems might need to go a little bit longer, but notice since we didn't put it in until it was boiling, this has retained its green color. If you start seeing green in your water, you're leaching out chlorophyll and thus you are also losing uh, nutrition. I, I need this to go a little bit longer. I like it a little softer. A couple more minutes. <clears throat> That's what it should look like when it's done. And now we'll take our oyster sauce. You can see how it's kind of thickened up a bit. And we will spoon this over. And we will enjoy. Here's our final dish. I think it turned out well. Gonna have a taste test and see if this is something to uh, put on the regular menu. Again, you can, you can stir fry this like we did today, steam it a little bit in some of the juices in the wok. You can even blanch it and just, uh, you know, boil it and soften it up that way. So let's try it. Mm-mm. Still a little crispy. I like it that way. I don't want it as soft as I like my asparagus. But um, it's also it's also got some good flavor. It's got that broccoli flavor. It does taste like broccoli, but maybe not as strong. And with this oyster sauce on there, you get some umami and some salt. 
the stalks have a little more flavor, I think, than the flower heads, but it's all very good. This is a very good vegetable, uh, something we're not really used to here in the West. It's not on the table in, um, you know, every night like it is in some Asian homes. Um, you can find this stuff in the Asian market, but you can grow it yourself so easily. Okay, so we have now grown, harvested, and cooked this gailan, this Chinese broccoli, and it was very good. But one thing I did uh, fail to mention when I was tasting it was the larger stalks did have a bit of fiber to the outer skin, and once you got through that, it was fine. What I've seen folks do is peel the skin off of larger stalks. Uh, these don't strike me as being large stalks, but the reason I think they have fiber is, like I've said, they're trying to bolt with this unusually warm weather. I'd like to try to grow these when it's cool and they don't have the tendency to bolt and try to complete their life cycle so quickly. They don't, they don't get so tall and leggy and see if we have the same problem. But this is a very delicious vegetable. I'm really glad that I chose to grow this. And uh, yeah, it's good. I think you should try it. So that's how uh, we're growing it here. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope that we've earned your subscription. Uh, please like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening and happy cooking. Bye-bye.